The purpose of this video is to teach you how to view the results from Turnitin. Turnitin.com is a site that we subscribe to uh, that you can enable on any of your assignments and student submissions will be routed through there for plagiarism detection. So I previously enabled Turnitin on this assignment and as a student I have submitted uh, one submission to be graded for this research paper. You can see as a requirement it does need a file upload and Turnitin needs to be enabled in advance. There's a separate video that will show you how to do that. In order for me to see the results, I can see it on one of two screens. I could come to my gradebook, and from my gradebook, I will see for this student, here's their submission. For the assignment, I haven't yet graded it, or there would be a grade here. And this red flag indicates Turnitin's score. So when you see this symbol, it's coming from Turnitin Originality, and the color coding indicates the level of severity Turnitin is assigning to this in terms of whether or not you need to look into it. So it's a great way at a glance of saying, ah, this is something I need to look at in more detail. Now I find the view in the speed grader, speed grader to be a little bit better. So let's go over to the speed grader for this particular research paper and uh, look at how it's, we see it in that view. And the reason why I like this better is we see a percentage. And what this is saying is that 76% of the content of this paper, Turnitin is able to attribute to other sources that it found. Okay, so what we can do is click on the 76% and it will take us directly to Turnitin's website where we can get more information. And you're gonna wanna do that, don't just go off of this percentage. So we go to uh, their website and we should expect a small percentage even for papers that have no plagiarism at all because if the content that um, Turnitin is able to associate with another website is in quotes and with a proper citation well then it's fine right and so if the student quoted a different source or cited their source they may well have snippets of their content uh, coming from those sources all right, so we can see the numbers over here and the color coding matches up with the numbers and color coding here, which is the various sources that we can, it comes from, and we see the similarity of score. We'll also see an AI score that we will look at in a moment. So let's look at some of these. In my case, the first two paragraphs of this was generated by AI. I used ChatGPT4 via Bing to generate the first two paragraphs. All the later paragraphs were cut and pasted by me. I purposely left the fonts different just so that we can easily see the fact uh, that they came from different sources. So this last one here, it says uh, is one from Mountain Times Info. I might want to click on this and find out, well, what's over there? What is that original source? Here they have a link to some of the content they found and where it is in context, and I can see Oh wow, it's a direct copy. Let me go look at that original source. So here I go to Mountain Times Info, and here is an article by Keisha Ram, and obviously it was plagiarized in uh, this report. Okay, so coming back over here, um, that lets me write some detailed notes for my conversation with a student of some questions that I might wanna ask them to better understand how they went about things and better support them uh, in properly citing in the future. Okay, so that's the similarity report. What about this AI score? So let's click on that. And when we click on that, Turnitin will show us separately from the plagiarism, is any of the content AI generated? And as I said, the first two paragraphs were generated completely via AI. I did do some editing towards the end, which is why this is not highlighted. So Turnitin was incredibly accurate in terms of identifying what was AI writing. It only identified these first two paragraphs and it did it successfully, which is actually really impressive because often Turnitin does get it wrong for AI writing. It You can get false positives and false negatives. Uh, the false positives are particularly annoying if a student writes in a very professional style. Um, and mimics the style that would naturally be used for that particular context, um, it may get flagged as AI incorrectly. 
And so really this AI writing score should be viewed from a perspective of you already having a sense for the student's understanding, their work, their writing style, and you can use this to check your own instinct, right? And then that can lead you to have a conversation with the student and obviously uh, pursue from there. So that's uh, Turnitin in a nutshell. And please, uh, it is a very helpful tool to take advantage of, uh, but it's a helpful tool to use in context uh, of having conversations with your students. Okay.